It's very hard to nail down what makes a great teacher. Sometimes you don't know until they actually get out there. Um, sometimes the very best music education students become very uh, disenchanted very fast. They lose their commitment, idealism. Uh, on the other hand, some will come in and completely astonish you. You, you won't think they can get past their shyness uh, uh, or their lack of confidence and they just go out and they... I think the main issue is you, you have to be committed to um, children, young people, or if you're teaching, for example, uh, adult learners or older learners in a, in a community music program, you have to love and enjoy the interaction and, and really find great satisfaction in the process of seeing other people develop and grow. If you don't have that, there's no, there's no point in going to music education. Now we, we, we very frequently get people in, coming in here who can't make it as jazz musicians or classical musicians and want to fall back on music education. And we do everything we can to discourage that because I don't want anybody in front of kids who, are, who, is, who is uncommitted because, as I put it, look, I don't, I don't mind so much if you make um, a mess of your life, but if you're up in front of children for three or four years and you don't like your job, then you're going to really turn off a lot of kids to, to music. So um, don't you dare think of music education as a fallback. Okay. You know? Oh yeah, I mean, I think that the charismatic part of teaching is, is, is very important. I think you learn that. Some people have a certain um, outwardness and comfort in, in front of other people and they really enjoy that part of it. Others can learn it, maybe not so fast. But the humorous aspect, you know, the discipline aspects. Um, teachers generally start out being very concerned about themselves and how they're coming across, very nervous. What do my students think of me? The next stage is sort of an integration of that with being a little more concerned with the students. And finally, your focus is pretty much all on your students. and. Your, your knowledge of discipline, your skills with that, um, the way you teach music, you have a lot of different strategies. You, your experience tells you what to do with certain students at certain times. It takes, it takes time to develop. Everything that you would have in a, maybe in a dramatic performance goes into to teaching. Um, you can't rely on that too much, but, um, but certainly that your voice, your gestures, your your relation to an audience, um, all of those things are factors, definitely. It develops your credibility. If you're asking them to be musical, then you've got to show them. You've got to sing. Uh, whether you're an instrumentalist or not, you have to demonstrate um, how things should be performed. If you can't play a certain instrument a certain way, you have to be confident enough to ask a senior student to demonstrate it. Peer teaching is, is really effective. A lot of uh, a lot of young teachers um, feel very insecure about asking for help from senior students. But it's sort of like, um, you know, a younger student will look up to an older student, almost sometimes more than they'll look up to a teacher. So, if, so there's strategies to, to get kids to help in that way. So, I mean, develop um, a secure feeling about yourself and the idea that you're not infallible that you'll make mistakes. The kids know you'll make mistakes. They're easy with that. They learn that. It creates a trust. You've got to create a trust in the classroom. That's, and so there's an easygoing part of that. Um, there's, there's ways to... I mean, for example, when I used to teach band, I would rotate the kids up on the podium and let them conduct. Why not? I mean, the idea that they're only learning when I up, I'm up there is pretty a major conceit, you know, and they love it and they, they feel great and they're more enthusiastic, they want to learn more, their, their peers are very proud of them, so we would have concerts, some of them would come up and, and conduct and, uh, I mean, that's the way I learned when I was in grade seven, my, I had a fabulous teacher who did that with us and, you know, in grade nine I was teaching my class almost every day and that's why I became a music teacher. And that left him to circulate in the, in the band and help the kids were weaker. And, um, and frankly, it made him look great. 
because, I mean, he didn't do it for that reason. He was just a terrific musician and wonderful teacher. So at the concerts, I got up and I conducted one piece and then later two pieces. In high school, I was conducting whole Broadway shows three nights because it, take a, it took a huge burden off my teachers and it taught me a huge amount. And it was a long history in these schools of, of these teachers doing this with, with um, students and many of us became professionals or, or teachers. I mean, and that was in the 60s, yeah? Still today, this is news to teachers. And we need to cultivate future teachers by giving them the thrill of being up in front of other students.